Shadowgraphy is the art of making shapes or shadows and using them to tell a story. Usually it's just your bare hands, that's the purest form of it. It's something that I think we've probably all done at some stage. To play and express yourself with that shadow I think is, is part of the mystery and charm of shadowography. The actual projection of images onto a screen is something that goes back hundreds and possibly even thousands of years. It was probably in uh, the 18th century when these beautiful art forms became popularised in Europe. One of the great luminaries that, that brought it to the attention of the world was uh, Felicien Truy, who was a uh, French shadowist. When he came to England, he also accompanied his tour uh, with his little booklet that we have, How It Is Done. It was also published in French, but our edition is from about 1893. It's ostensibly, it's an instructional book, and there are beautiful graphic black and white illustrations in it. But one of my favourites is one we got more recently, and it was first published in uh, 1859, when Henry Bursell, who was a sculptor and a medalist, um, produced this little book of hand shadows while he was studying at the Royal Academy. They're beautifully drawn images in it and I just love that it's, it's only a small book but it draws in so much flavour of the time and such a spirit of fun and, and play about it. Then you have another luminary in the 20th century, uh, Louis Nicola was a magician and a shadowist and he became very successful and toured throughout Europe. He even visited Australia in 1918. It's an interesting book because he's certainly explaining it and making it accessible to families and children and people in the home because it's a perfect domestic theatre. Anyone can perform shadowgraphy and you need only a few things. One is a very sharp point of light and if you've got a smartphone, that's the perfect, the perfect sharp light. The other thing you need is a screen. It can be something as simple as a wall, or you could put up um, a, a projector screen or a card or something like that. And sometimes it's nice to have a little round mask as we've used here today, that's inspired by Louis Nicola's stage performance. So that just gives a lovely frame to your, to your performance. And then it's just a matter of a bit of practice. Uh, you'll notice you'll get better quickly. And have a look at one of the, the beautiful shadowgraphy books that we have in the library. Lots of them have been fully digitised and so you can have a look there and, and practice. Okay, let's do just a, a, an example of, a, of a, a simple one. This is a swan or an Australian swan would be a black swan, of course. And there's a little bit of trial and error when you're, when you're actually learning your shadows. So just something like tipping the angle because it's a, it's a flat two-dimensional image and your hands are three-dimensional. So you might need to just experiment a little bit until you get the effect. And another tip from, from, um, from Nicola is to imagine the animal that you're actually trying to represent and, and that's what brings it to life. You're thinking about how an animal would move and that's the dynamic part of it, the flow and the spirit of it. It's, it's a very dynamic and expressive kind of form. And one of the lovely things you can do is you can change the size of things. This is as you move closer and further away from the light. So if we're making a, making a wolf here, we can just have our little wolf and he could be right far away and he's very small and he's howling at the moon. And then we can bring him closer. And there's a giant wolf here. Very scary. <laughs> and of course you can have music or you can, you can play the part of the creatures. You can play with other people uh, and, and have your own play. Be your own director and write your own story for it and it's, it's the best fun. <laughs> so enjoy shadowgraphy.